Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about triangles and what parts of triangles are proportional to each other. Okay. In the past, we have spoken about several things. We have spoken about uh, when we're dealing with triangles and parts of triangles, we've spoken about medians. Sorry, let me just... Oh, that's not going to work right now for some reason. We've spoken about medians. I know we have spoken about altitude, which is like the height of a triangle. We've spoken about angle bisectors. Oof. Which cuts the angle in half. We've spoken about, oh man, perpendicular bisectors. Don't know what's going on with my, with my thing right now. These are just a few things that we've spoken about, right? Um, heights, medians, centroids, orthocenters, all of these different topics that we've spoken about apart from the triangles um, are also going to be proportional. So I can basically sum up the rest of this video here in this next 30 seconds. And this is what we're talking about. If I have two triangles that I know are proportional, let's say that this triangle is proportional to this triangle. Right, and let's say that I already know the ratio is two. Let's make this quite simple. Let's say this is five and this is 10. I know they're proportional to each other. I know that they're similar, that's given. If they're similar, then everything about these triangles will be proportional as well. Right, if I know that the ratio here is being doubled, I can use the height here of two to predict the height of this one as well, which is gonna be four. Everything is gonna be doubled. The inside of the triangle, the outside of the triangle, all parts of the triangle are proportional. So if you've been keeping up with these videos and you know that two triangles are proportional to each other, the outsides are proportional, they have the same scale factor, they have the same ratio, then the inside is no different. We could be talking about medians, we can be talking about altitudes or heights, angle bisectors, perpendicular bisectors, we could be talking about any topic about triangles, everything about it will be proportional. So I'm gonna show you an example of each of these types of parts of triangles and, and then help you see how it's the same topic. Let's get to it. So here we have altitudes or the height. The height of the triangle will always be perpendicular to the base. It'll always go straight down to the base. Always form a 90 degree angle. So here when I'm creating my proportion, I'm looking at the corresponding sides. 20 is to 16. Twenty is to sixteen as fifteen is to x. The thing to consider here is that you're going from the diagonal outside leg to the height. So 20 over height equals 15 over height. And then we just cross multiply, honestly. We do the exact same thing we've been doing in, in all of these videos and all of these topics in this unit. We cross multiply and solve for x. So when you cross multiply the, uh, the x value, we have 20 times x gives you 20x. When you cross multiply 16 times 15, you get 240. And then we just divide both sides by 20, and you get x equals 12. Right? Setting up the proportion is the biggest deal. And you can do it with the, with the heights as well of the triangle. Now let's talk about medians. Medians are 
when you're cutting the triangle into two equal parts, right? I know that these, this line and this line are medians because these two are congruent and these two are congruent. So the that sides are gonna get cut in half, it's in the middle, it's cutting it right down the middle. So you can do two types of proportions here when you're solving this. You can say six is to x as 14 is to 21, or you can even go with the other scenario, 14 is to 21, sorry, let's go back. Or I can look at the entire length, 12 is to x, as 28 is to 21. We do the exact same thing. We cross multiply and solve for x. I'm gonna go with the one on top because we're dealing with some smaller numbers and it's easier to multiply. But you can choose whichever one you pick and they will both be the same. We cross multiply, we cross multiply. Uh, 21 times six is 126. So I'm gonna solve this problem down here. So six times 21 is 126 equals 14 times x. Divide both sides by 14. x equals 126 divided by 14, which gives us 9. And if you do this other one, you should get the exact same solution. So medians are also proportional. The height of a triangle is proportional, the median is proportional, and lastly, angle bisectors are also proportional. I know that I'm dealing with an angle bisector because if you notice this line is cutting this angle into two equal parts. It's cutting this angle into two equal parts. So there's actually two types of angle bisectors that I'm gonna be showing you. In this one right here, I'm comparing two different triangles. This one and this one are proportional because all of the angles are congruent, right? Because the angles are congruent, I'm dealing with two proportional triangles, so my ratio becomes x is to 21 as 8 is to 6. Right? Be careful how you set up your proportion. I'm going from the outside to the inside, so I have to go from the outside to the inside. x over 21 equals 8 over 6. And then again, cross multiply and solve. It's the same process for proportions. Cross, multiply, and solve for x. So we got 6 times x is 6x. 8 times 21 is 168. Divide both sides by 6. And x equals 28. So if you have two triangles with angle bisectors, they're going to be proportional. In this next one, we're also dealing with angle bisectors because notice how the angle is being cut right down the middle, right down the middle, right down the middle. But the setup here is going to be slightly different because we're not comparing this triangle anymore to another triangle. We're going to compare the relationship that happens within the triangle. So we're going to compare this triangle to itself this triangle to itself, and this triangle to itself. And this is really what is, is the most impressive part of all of these theorems to me, is the effect of the angle bisector. This angle bisector is gonna cut the angle in half. Not, not the triangle in half, but the, the angle. And by doing so, it creates two sides of the triangle. It creates these two little legs, and at the same time, it creates these two other legs, the bigger ones. The ratio of those two legs is always gonna be proportional. And that's what's so cool about this process, is that you can do y over eight. If you divide the, the two little legs on the right, and you divide the two legs on the left, this right here is 20, by the way, right? If you think about it, the whole thing's 28. If you subtract eight, you're left with 20, right? 28 minus eight. 20. So the ratio of these two legs should equal the ratio of these two legs because the angles cut right down the middle.
And then we just cross multiply and solve. Right? So I like to extend my, my ratios to the angle bisectors as my dividers. And everything on the left is proportional to everything on the right. So on this next example, on the left I have 6x plus 2 over 9x minus 2 should equal 8 over 10. Cross multiply, soft x. And this last one, same thing. The angle is going to cut this triangle here to two different parts. We have these two, 15 over z. It's going to equal 9 over this other piece. This piece is really just the whole length minus z. Right? Just like this other problem. How did we get 20? We did 28 subtract 8. You get with the leftover piece. Same thing here. 32 take away z is 32 minus z. And then we just cross multiply and solve. So in essence, this, for this property of triangles, is for today's video, if I can sum it all up, if you know two triangles are proportional, if you know two triangles are similar to each other, then everything about them will be proportional as well the height, the median, or the angle bisector will all be at the same ratio. So you can solve for those missing parts of the triangle if you know the triangles in the end are proportional or similar to one another. I hope that these videos are clarifying things for you. Don't get so caught up on the math on how to like the solving part. Yes, it's important. I'm more focused on how can you set it up? Can you set up these problems? And then after that, just cross multiplying and solving. All right, everyone, I hope this has helped. Please let me know if you have any questions. And as always, we'll calculate it.